This is basically part one of a three part video series where I'm going to also go over subcutaneous and intramuscular injections. Okay, hey nurse family, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about needle sizes and syringes and how do you choose, okay? So I know that many of you are currently having limited clinical um, experiences and this is an area where my students already struggle even when there wasn't COVID and there weren't limitations on clinical experiences so I wanted to take this time to kind of go over you know how is it that a nurse chooses needles a needle size and a syringe okay very important because it's gonna dictate how we administer a medication and if we're administering it correctly I should say a disclaimer if you are this video is intended for healthcare professionals people who work in the healthcare industry as nurses or uh, medical assistants um, physicians this video is not intended for personal use okay um, so if you're interested in learning more about how to choose your syringes and needle sizes stick around because this video will tell you just that Kick. Hey, hey, hey. Before I start, I want to say that this is not a complete comprehensive review of every needle size and syringe. I chose the most common ones that you will see in the hospital, most commonly used in the adult population, but we will see some um, needle sizes that you can also use in the pediatric population. But I specialize with adults, so I'm going to talk mostly about adult syringes and needle sizes, okay? When a nurse receives an order from the provider, Okay, so the first thing obviously always starts with an order. So we get an order for a medication. Once we receive the order for the medication, there's a lot of things that go into considering what needle size and syringe we're going to be using to administer this medication, okay? The first thing is the type of medication. Is this medication viscous or is it a nice clear uh, medication, okay? Um, is this medication irritating to the skin? Is it painful? Is this volume of medication large or small? Okay, who is this person that I'm going to be administering this medication to? Um, what route am I going to be administering? Okay, is this gonna be sub Q or is this gonna be IM? Okay, and so all of those things go into how to choose the syringe and the needle size. However, I wanna add that once you've decided, okay, well, I'm giving a medication that is not viscous, so I don't have to worry about a large diameter needle, you wanna think about where are you going to administer this medication. So for example, if I'm gonna be administering a subcutaneous injection, I wanna think about where am I going to be administering it? The size of my patient, Okay, so the size of that area, the dem the age demographics. Um, if I'm gonna be administering it IM, I also wanna think about, you know, the vo all those things that we talked about, the volume of um, fluid, because I wanna make sure I'm administering it into a muscle that can tolerate that much, that can receive that much medication, okay? Is it gonna be painful? Do I wanna use the patient's arm to administer a medication that's gonna be painful and now the patient will probably not be able to use that arm for the day because they're gonna be uncomfortable. Okay, so I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Um, so definitely the size of the muscle, the size of the patient um, is are all things that you wanna um, think about, right? Not only the size of the muscle, but how much adipose tissue are we working with? I've had patients that are so frail that you can't even find <laughs> subcutaneous tissue. You're looking for it and you're just wondering where am I gonna administer this medication? Okay, so those are all the things that we consider. Once we consider all of those things, then we start to decide the needle size and the type of syringe that we're going to use. So, for example, when we talk about needle sizes, we talk about two different things. We talk about the diameter of the needle, so how wide, right, how thick the needle is, and we talk about the length, so how long the needle. Now, this part is a little confusing, but don't blame it on me because I didn't make it up. When we talk about the diameter of the needle and we talk about the gauge, we talk about gauge, right? 
the bigger the number, the smaller the diameter. I'm gonna repeat that again. When we talk about the diameter of the needle, the bigger the gauge, the smaller it is. So it's an inverse relationship, okay? So for example, the 25 gauge needle, which is a commonly used needle in the, in the hospital, at least in my practice, we get we use a lot of 25 gauge, um, 5 eighths inch needles to administer um, subcutaneous injections. It is a smaller diameter, okay? Whereas if I go for a 20 gauge needle, which I went from 25 to 20, so you would think that it's a smaller, it's actually a bigger diameter. So I'm going to show you different needle gauges and lengths, but I want you to keep in mind, I know, first of all, needle safety is so important, okay? Um, being safe when handling needles so that you prevent needle sticks are so important. I'm gonna be showing you various different needles here. Um, so just keep in mind that I'm going to be showing it to you at the, at the camera and it might not look safe and it might even look a little scary to you all, but this is the best way that I can teach you and show you without having you in the lab, okay? So bear with me. And if it's really hard and challenging for you to see me waving these needles around, then you might want to switch the channel. All right. So that was gauge. Now I want to talk to you about needle length, which is most commonly the um, what you're considering when you're thinking about the needles. OK, because most medications that you're going to administer, depending on where you work, are probably not going to be viscous solutions that need a larger diameter, but they will need a longer or shorter length, depending on whether or not you're trying to reach the muscle or if you're trying to reach the subcutaneous um, layer, okay? So I have a couple of different needle sizes. I range from anywhere from 5 eighths of an inch to one and a half inch. So I'm gonna be showing you those. The first needle that I'm gonna be showing you is going to be a 25 gauge needle and it is 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, now this needle can be used when giving an intramuscular injection to infants and children. But when we're talking about adults, most of the time this would be too short of a needle to use for an IM injection in adults, but it is commonly used in administering a subcutaneous injection for um, adults. So here we have a 25 gauge, 5 eighth inch needle, okay? Now, there are um, colors associated with these different gauges, but I don't want you to get hung up on the colors because different manufacturers may use different colors for their size needle. So you really want to just, you know, think about the size of the needle and the purpose of why you're using these needles, okay? So here I have the 25 gauge needle, okay? Now I know that it's very difficult to tell on camera, but I'm gonna be showing you the various different needles and hopefully then you'll be able to see the difference. I think it's a little, let's see, a little bit better if I do it like this so that you can see. And again, this, must, this might not look like much to you now, but as I start to get longer in um, needle length, I think that it'll be easier for you to understand um, what I'm trying to convey to you. Okay, so here is a 25 gauge, 5 8 inch needle. And this is commonly used to administer subcutaneous injections in adults and intramuscular injections in um, infants or children and maybe if you also have an adult who is, you know, quite small, um, it can possibly be used um, to reach the muscle. But just notice the, the length. So the next thing that I'm going to show you, the next needle that I'm going to show you is a 23 gauge one inch needle. Okay. So notice that not only did I go up in diameter, okay, but I also went up in length so let's see if we see a big difference in these okay bear with me i'm just gonna attach this needle to the syringe so here is the 23 gauge there you go that looks better 23 gauge one inch needle 
to me it doesn't look too different right now let's put them together and let's see how that looks Okay, so now you can kind of see, now you probably can't really tell the diameter just yet, that there is a difference in diameter. But looking at it, I can definitely see it, that it's thicker, it's a wider needle. And again, I would want a wider diameter needle if I was going to be administering a medication that is more viscous or a larger amount, okay? and I wanna administer it in a certain speed. Okay, so bear with me. The next needle that I'm gonna show you is going to be a 22 gauge, one and a half inch needle. And whenever I pull this one out, my students don't like it. <laughs> so um, now this needle is very commonly used in intramuscular injections in the adult population. Okay, so hold on one second. All right, so here we go. Here is my 22 gauge, one and a half inch needle, okay? And so if you put it together with your 25 gauge, five eighth inch needle, you can see that there's a huge difference. Okay, so I kind of already told you, but think about this only needs to go as far as the subcutaneous layer if I'm giving a sub-Q injection in an adult, right? So I have a shorter length needle because I don't need to reach as far. But if I have to give an intramuscular injection, I have to go much further than the subcutaneous. And I want to make sure that I reach that muscle because that is how I'm giving it the correct route so that I can control the rate of absorption and the way that the medication works in my patient, right? So extremely important that I choose the correct needle length. Now, we could have used the one inch needle as well. A one inch needle is totally appropriate in adults, okay? However, you need to think about how big the muscle is. So if I have an adult who has a large muscle mass area, then I wanna consider getting a longer needle so that I make sure that I reach that muscle, okay? So again, just to reiterate, this one here is my 5 8 inch needle. Can be used for IM injections in infants and children. Um, also very small adults, but most commonly used as a subcutaneous needle. I give it all the, I use it all the time when I administer heparin. Okay. And then this longer needle is one and a half inch. I feel like, stop. <laughs> one and a half inch um, needle and it's a 22 gauge. So it's also greater in diameter. Okay. And more commonly used in IM. Now we talked a lot about the importance of re, of re, um, excuse me of choosing a needle that is the appropriate length because we want to make sure that we reach the muscle. However, we should also consider the fact that we might also be taking care of a patient who does not have as much muscle mass, and we want to make sure that we do not reach the bone. Now you could avoid that by not going in as far. Let's say you had the one and a half inch needle or you can just choose a shorter length needle. So these are all the decisions that you're gonna make as the nurse, okay? I'll show you one more, but it's you're not gonna really be able to see this, the difference on camera. Um, this is a 21 gauge, so it's um, wider in diameter, but um, it's still one and a half inch needle, so it's not a big, difference i guess i really would love to for you to see um the thickness of the needle like how wide they are so this again is your um 21 and this is your 22. let me go ahead and try showing you that 25 gauge again all right so i'm not sure if it's picking up well on camera um and notice that little hole right there at the top it's a little cloudy, it's a little blurry. <laughs> um, but that is your bevel. When we talk about the bevel of the needle, that's the bevel, that point, that little hole. Okay, so I think you can, I think right here, 
right there you could see um the difference in the thickness and the diameter of the needle. okay before we um end and we finish with this needles and move on to syringes i want to talk to you about a blunt needle a blunt needle is used to withdraw medication from a vial okay so it's not used for sub q or intramuscular injection it's not used for injection purposes it is solely used to remove medications or make, i guess a specimen or to insert a specimen into uh let's say you had urine that you needed to transfer into um, a urine culture vial or something like that you would use a blunt needle okay so the blunt needle that i have today is an 18 gauge one and a half inch needle so I just want to show you that this blunt needle um, also comes with a filter. Okay. And let me get a syringe so that I can attach it so you can see the difference. So the other needles that I showed you have safety mechanisms. This needle does not. Okay. It is first of all an 18 gauge, which of course you could use an 18 gauge on patients. We use them all the time as angio caps when inserting um, saline locks, IVs, okay. Um, but this one is specifically, it's not, um, it's not pointy the way a needle is. If you notice, the bevel is different, okay. And it is solely for the purpose of withdrawing medication from a vial or inserting a specimen. So when you're using these, you have to be careful because sometimes um, you can be using this to transfer a specimen into a specimen container and they do not have a safety mechanism. So you do want to use the scoop method um, if you are going to be recapping this or in most cases, you want to just go ahead and throw it right into the shards container. Okay. So again, this is a blunt needle. This one is 18 gauge, one and a half inch, and it is used for um, either withdrawing medication or um, transferring a specimen into a specimen container okay and then lastly I just want to show you is an insulin um, syringe which already comes with a needle attached so this is a one milliliter um, insulin syringe it goes up to a hundred units okay and the needle length on here is half an inch and as you know insulin is um, given um, subcutaneous okay so this is just one type of insulin syringes there's various ones but here you can see the um, the needle length and you can see that the diameter it's 29 gauge um, so very small okay and then here this safety mechanism is right here so you just basically lift it up I don't want to activate it because I want to keep it for future um, videos so 29 gauge, um, half an inch needle, and we use it for insulin. So this one comes in units. We don't, when we talk about insulin, we don't talk about milliliters, although obviously this is a one milliliter syringe, but it's a hundred units. So typically you're giving five units or four units, 10 units. And so you're gonna use an insulin syringe specifically because that'll give you the unit measurement that you want, okay? Alrighty. All right. So let's talk about the vials and how to choose how much volume. Now, this is something that I want you to pay attention to. Okay. Whenever I have students in the lab, they will look at an order. So for example, if my students have an order for um, morphine, five milligrams. Okay. So they have an order for morphine, five milligrams. And then they pick up the vial. So for example, I have a vial here. This is simulated, this is not morphine. It's a simulated vial and it says morphine, 10 milligrams an ml, right? It's very often that I notice that my students don't really understand what that means. What this vial is telling me is that for every milliliter, I have 10 milligrams of this medication. Okay, so a lot of times if my students have to administer a medication, they think that they have to do math right away. Sometimes you do have to do math. Sometimes, you know, it's a little bit more complex than just five milligrams. Just think about what this is telling you. This is telling me 10 milligrams an ml. So that means every milliliter is 10 milligrams of morphine because 
my syringes do not come in milligrams. They come in milliliters, okay? My syringes do not come in milligrams. That's the dose of the morphine. They come in milliliters, which is the dilutant, okay? What it's diluted in, how much fluid volume it's diluted in. So if I have an order for morphine five milligrams and my vial says 10 milligrams per one ml, that means one ml is 10 milligrams. If I wanna only give five milligrams, which is half of 10, then I wanna give half an ml, okay? So again, I wanna give half a milliliter. So would it be appropriate for me to grab a syringe this big? No, it's, it's not. Half an ml, I mean, at the very least, I should be using a three ml syringe, or if it was me, if I was administering morphine, I wanna make sure I administer it very slowly. I'm gonna use my one milliliter syringe so that I can really control this. If I'm administering this, we're talking about IV push here, okay? Um, so those are the things that you wanna consider. So I'll just give you one more example. So let's say the vial said morphine, two milligrams a milliliter, right? So two milligrams, one milliliter. So that means one milliliter is two milligrams of morphine. And my provider ordered four mil, I'm giving you easy math here, four milligrams of morphine, okay? So if one milliliter is two milligrams of morphine and I wanna give four milligrams of morphine, I have to double that. So I'm gonna give two milliliters, okay? So what my students always say, oh, we have to draw up um, four milligrams. No, no, you have to draw up two milliliters, okay? Remember, we're not working in milligrams. The doctor is not gonna tell you how many milliliters you have to draw up. The doctor is gonna say morphine, four milligrams, IV push. You're gonna get the vial. It might be a different vial each time. It's whatever your pharmacy makes available to you. So it might be a 10 milligram per one ml. It might be a two milligrams per one ml, five milligrams. So you're gonna do the math yourself. Now, if that, um, if you're not able to do it that easy, let's say they ordered three milligrams of morphine, right? Then you can use your D over H times Q. And that's another video, so I'm not gonna get into that. But then you would use your doctor's order over what you have times the quantity. So if they ordered three milligrams, we would say three milligrams over two milligrams times one ml, okay? So then you would do three divided by two times one. Now let's talk about syringe size. Syringe really depends on how much volume you're going to be administering and how quickly you want to administer it. So for example, just yesterday, I had my students in the lab and they were going to administer a medication that needed to be administered over two minutes and there was one milliliter in the um, syringe, okay? And they all use the three milliliter syringe, which is appropriate. Let's take these syringes out so you could see what I'm talking about. Um, here I have a three milliliter syringe, okay? And when I look at the three milliliter syringe, I see that the first big notch is half an ml, right? So that means that each notch here is one or 0.1, excuse me, 0.1. So I have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, okay? Now they were supposed to administer one milliliter. So that is totally appropriate. I could absolutely give a one milliliter medication via a three milliliter syringe. In fact, I see a lot of nurses draw up heparin in a three milliliter syringe. Okay, the one thing to consider is as I'm pushing this medication in, it's very easy to lose control because there's not a lot of distance for me to travel, okay? And so if I'm trying to administer this medication over two minutes, so that means I have to give half an ml over a minute, it's possible to do, but it's a little harder to do. So oftentimes, and again, this is not wrong. I see nurses all the time administer heparin with a three milliliter syringe. However, I personally prefer 
to have more control of the medication that I'm administering, specifically if I'm going to be administering it slowly. Now, I should clarify that the medication that they were giving yesterday was IV push, okay? So it's different when you're talking about IM and sub-Q, you typically wanna give it over um, 10 seconds per milliliter, okay? Um, whereas if you're talking about IV push, each medication will have their rate of how quickly or how slowly you need to administer. So just to clarify, they were administering an IV push medication that needed to be pushed over two minutes and it was one milliliter. So if you notice here, I have a one milliliter syringe. Okay, so here's my three milliliter syringe and here's my one milliliter syringe. And I can still go ahead and just bring the plunger all the way down to the one ml, right? However, the difference here is as I am starting to move up, notice how I'm able to control how quickly I administer this. And so that I can really administer this as slowly or as quickly as I need to. So that is just something to consider um, with, if you're talking about like, a, sometimes you have, you know, 0.2 mLs. So look at 0.2 mLs on here. And let's look at 0.2 mLs on my three milliliter syringe. So if you look, 0.2 mLs, this is, I mean, as soon as I push the plunger, I'm gonna administer that 0.2 mLs, which might be necessary, depends on what you're administering. Whereas look at 0.2 mLs here, okay? So you really wanna think about the volume of fluid that you're going to be administering as well as how quickly you wanna administer. So, you know, if I wanna administer something um, with the five milliliter syringe, each notch is 0.2. So that's something that I need to consider if I wanna administer something that's 0.5 or 0.7, you know, an odd number, um, I need to consider that. And this goes up to five milliliters this is my five milliliters. so here's my five milliliter syringe here's my three milliliter it goes by point ones and then here is my one milliliter syringe the last one i will show you is the 10 milliliter syringe and this one also goes by point two the small notches are by point two okay so again you need to consider that so if i need to give something that is 1.2 Yes, can I use this? I absolutely can. But I probably should use something that I'll be able to control a lot better, okay? So if you look, let's do point 0.2 in all of these. This is point 0.1, point 0.2. So you could see the difference. This is 1.2, okay? This is 1.2. This is 1.2. And this one doesn't go up to 1.2 because it only goes up to one milliliter. So thinking about that, and you want to control how quickly you administer, because remember, these syringes can be used for IM, sub-Q, um, and IV push. You want to think about how much volume you have and how quickly. So of course, you also want to choose a syringe that is big enough to withstand the amount of volume that you have. So if you have to administer five milliliters IV push, you do not want to grab a three milliliter syringe, right? That's kind of logical as my three-year-old would say. All right. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put it in the comment box. If you've asked me questions in the past, you can see that I am very responsive. I do look at your questions. And this video was recommended by a student a few months ago, and I finally got around to doing it. I thought this was the perfect time because I'm currently seeing the um, the effects of the lack of clinical experiences for my students and, and them not having an opportunity to work with syringes and needles to be able to know how to choose the appropriate one. This is something that's so simple, but if you don't have the experience, you're not gonna really understand it. So I hope this video helps. Once again, feel free to um, write any questions or comments and feel free to follow me on Instagram. It's nurse.erica underscore YouTube so that you can let me know what other videos you would like to see and just so you're updated on what videos I'm working on. All right, good luck this semester. Keep working hard. Give it all you got. I promise it will be worth it in the end. Bye-bye. One, two, three, come on.